Jared McCain is wet. Said it, I'm golden. Told you I'm shining. Had to break through. Play perfect timing. What's good, y'all? Welcome back to my five-part series where I'm ranking the top five draft picks that the Miami Heat should target at number 15 in the NBA draft this year. Make sure to like the video and subscribe because I'm on the grind to 5K subs before the start of next basketball season, and I greatly appreciate it. Dude, you're wasting your time. We're trading the pick for Spider. Oh, don't get your hopes up. Remember what happened with Dame? Dude, both of y'all got to get out of here. These people got a video to watch. So coming in at number two on my draft wish list, I told you to subscribe. Have a the guy button. That a lot it's free. More familiar with. It's Jared McCain out of Duke. I'll give you guys a scouting report in case you haven't heard much about the name. And along the way, we'll kind of talk about how he fits in with the Miami Heat. So I looked at a few different websites to see where they have him ranked in the mock draft. I went to NBADraft.net, USA Today, Bleacher Report, The Ringer, led by that bomb Bill Simmons, and CBS. Now, they have him at number 25, number 19, number 13, number 15, and number 12. So obviously, the, the highest variance so far, anywhere from 12 to 25. So considering the, the fact that the Heat pick on 15, I do think it'd be decent value if he sort of is able to fall to them, especially since he is a bit of a bigger name in this draft and is an elite shooter. I'll get that out the gate right away. That is the name of the game for uh, Jared McCain. And it's kind of the same thing with what I said yesterday about the Silva, except the Silva was 6'9 and McCain is 6'3. So you'd think I would want the, the, the bigger guy that could shoot, but Jared McCain is a little bit younger. And I think the upside is through the roof. And he's a guy that could sort of play right now also. Now, in his one year at Duke, he played 32 minutes a night, averaged 14 points, got five boards a game. So for the guard position, that's something I like to see. And also got two assists a night. He was 46% field goal. Again, for a shooter who is a guard, 46% I think is pretty decent. Only took 10 shots a game too, right? And I think six of those were threes. So over half of his shots came from the three-point line. So that but i don't want to just limit to him to being a three-point shooter it's just that was his role on duke so as we sort of talk about him just keep in mind there's a lot of really great players on that team there was jeremy roach they played through kyle filipowski a lot so we i don't think we saw his full repertoire but he's shown flashes of just being a really great sort of a, a lethal three-level scorer in the nba and that's kind of the main reason i have him at a, at number two on my list and on those six attempts per game for three, he was at 41%. And he's an 89% uh, free throw shooter. So obviously efficient as hell from downtown and a free throw line. Now, some of his player comps were Emmanuel quickly, which I'd love. I'd love that on the Heat, a, a guard that could score and provide some quickness. Two things that the Heat desperately need. I also saw Seth Curry. Uh, I mean, Seth Curry is good, but he's sort of just a spot up shooter. They, the Heat could find, the Heat find those falling out the side of a, a building, right? Like Cole Swider, Duncan Robinson. They, they could find those movement shooters. So I do hope that McCain's a little bit more than that. Uh, and the last comparison I saw was was Bryn Forbes. Uh, I know we're not really allowed to say that name. His name is Ban uh, because of the, the PTSD from from 2021. Uh, but we did we did mention how Derek White was a comparison for Devin Carter in when I was talking about number five, you know, in this series. And uh, I said, Derek White haunts me. Bryn Forbes is a guy that does keep me up at night because obviously that series in 2021, I think he's in jail now, by the way. I forget what it's for, but it's his mugshots online. Y'all could look it up. Anyways, I've talked about BF enough. We're not, we're not saying his name no more around here. But I do hope, like we said about Seth Curry, I do hope that I do hope that Jeremy McCain can turn into a little bit more than just a, a movement slash spot up shooter. And I think he can. He just turned 20 years old in February, so he's still very young. His official combine measurements had him at 6'2", with a, a, a little, just under a 6'4 wingspan, so positive wingspan unlike Tyler Hero uh, and he did come in at 203 pounds so not super small right he's not I said it in an earlier video I feel bad to pick on Rob Dillingham but Dilly is like 175 he's he's very tiny Jared McCain is a, a little bit bigger than that now he's an excellent three-point shooter he is great at transition threes just like Tyler Hero I'll give Tyler Hero some credit there you know those those monster threes you're on a little bit of a run your team gets a stop you, you get a steal pull up in transition three the place goes crazy opposing coach calls timeout that is something that McCain is great at and that's a very difficult shot so to sort of I don't want to say perfected that but to sort of have that down at the age of 20 is something that I think is a huge positive 
for Jared McCain. Now he's excellent off the ball as well, which is important because on the Miami Heat, he's not going to be the, the primary ball handler, especially since he's not a great facilitator. The, we kind of said the same thing about Devin Carter, right? He's, he won't come here and sort of be the, the PG replacement. I, I don't think he could ever start at the point guard, at least not full time, you know what I mean? And that's part of the reason that I have him at number two here, right? Instead, instead of higher, because overall, he's a great player. He's great off the ball. He can catch and shoot excellent uh and uh what else we have here uh, yeah he didn't have the, the ball in his hands a ton is kind of what i was gonna say so maybe he can be more of a point guard we just didn't see it yet so i wanted to point that out again but we talked about a little bit of a, a i said he could be a three level score and all around guy because his mid-range game is very good as well very efficient a little bit of a lower volume but it's just something that that you like to see because he's excellent at getting to his spots nothing looks forced and that's kind of why I personally am pretty high on him because a guy that can get to his spots easily and convert at an efficient rate, well, that means that that's the sign of a great score, right? Don't overthink it. He's a guy that if he did get more volume, if he had to step up, if he grows a little bit physically and, you know, age-wise gets some more experience, maybe he's a guy that can just get to his spots more often or gets the chance to do that more often. And now you're talking about a 20 plus point per game score. And I do think there's there is that potential with Jared McCain because he is that good a shooter. And he's even decent at getting into the paint and playing through contact. Uh, what else did I say? But he doesn't live in it. Uh, I'm just reading my notes here. Uh, but he can attack uh, closeout. So he doesn't live in the paint. This is a guy that's a shooter. I said three level. He can get to the rim. But more, more likely than not, it's going to be at that two, mostly three-point line. But the part that I like is that when he does get into a paint for a guy that's 6'2", he can use his body. That that's I don't want to keep picking on Tyler Hero, but that was one of my biggest problems with Tyler. Is he got blocked a lot at the rim. He was getting bodied by guys like Derek White, and it was unfortunate. And I know Jeremy McCain's he's quite a bit smaller than Tyler Hero, but he has shown an ability to use his body. That's a skill. You can be 6'2", you know, 200 pounds, but if you know how to use leverage and know how to angle your body, body, that's how you play a lot bigger than you actually are. And that's something that McCain showed some promise in when getting to the basket over at Duke. Uh, the only thing is, though, he, he's not a great athlete. He doesn't have a ton of speed. There was only two dunks for him in college. So this is one downside that he has to Devin Carter. Devin Carter was an elite athlete. That's a plus because I do like the idea of the Miami Heat finally playing faster, but it's not like Jared McCain is slow. So I don't think the, the lack of athleticism is too perfect because again, as long as you can get to your spots, I don't need you dunking on guys or blowing past them. Get to your spots, knock them down. That's the name of the game. Uh, I had a lot of low assist numbers. I think that's more of a usage thing though, right? So that's why right now I, I will say, I don't think he can be a PG one. Uh, but the potential's there only because he was a low mistake guy, not a lot of turnovers in college. Again, didn't have a lot of usage, but it just did seem like he was making the right play more often than not. Uh, but the things that I do love about him is he has great instincts, a great motor. He's physical. Uh, you know, he has a lot of strength on defense. Doesn't mean he's switchable. But he can guard those guys like Jalen Brunson, who likes to use their body, or Tyrese Maxey, who likes to get in their paint. He can use his body to defend those guys and even, you know, some of the bigger guards that he does have to go up against. I don't think he'd get absolutely bullied like number four. <laughs> I can't do it no more. I'm sorry. Like number 14 on the Miami Heat. Uh, I'm coughing too. My, my voice is dry. I'm recording all these videos in one day uh, for this five-part series because I'm going out of town for the rest of the weekend. My boy, Will, if y'all remember from the, the Wednesdays with Will series, that's the series I had back in the day. Uh, if y'all OG fans remember that, comment down below and I'll give y'all a heart because uh, I had a bunch of top five series, like top five Heat jerseys, top five most hated Heat players. It was a good time. Maybe we'll bring it back one day. But anyways, my boy's getting married, so I'll be out of town. But I had to get the content up for y'all, so I figured what better time to do a little bit of a draft series here. But anyways, uh, I just like Jerry McCain overall, man. Like I said, uh, we talked about Khalil Ware in, in the uh, two, two parts ago and about how he doesn't seem like a heat culture guy. Jared McCain does. He has that, that hustle, that heart, that effort on defense that you like to see. And when you take a guy who wants it that bad and tries that hard, he's that much of a dog in the gym, and you pair that with a heat development staff that is the best in the NBA, that is where I think you really see a potential star 
in the making. Also, he seems like a great guy, actually, too, off the court. I know people make fun of him for the TikToks and they think it's cringe and corny. The stupid people that don't like him because he paints his fingernails. That's stupid. Same, same people that D Wade's their goat. D Wade paints his fingernails to it. It doesn't make a man any less masculine. If anything, painting your fingernails is the guy that I want on my team because it shows he has the confidence and he truly doesn't give a shit what anyone else says. People don't like Caleb Williams, the, the quarterback who was just dra drafted to Chicago because he paints his nails. They think he's going to be too soft to play in the league. Caleb Williams is about to bust everyone's ass because that's the dude who doesn't care what no one thinks. And I feel the same way about Jared McCain. Not just because he paints his nails, but the point is, if you're one of those people that, that thinks he's fruity because he does that, go get a life, man. Like, it's, it's 2024. Like, let, let the man live. He ain't causing anyone no harm. Uh, but anyways, I've also heard Jared McCain on several podcasts, like even on uh, Numbers on the Board. Shout out to those guys. Great guy, great personality. And I wouldn't draft. I, I, I'll draft a boring, slow guy with the personality of Bill Belichick if they could hoop. But it's just a plus that he's a nice guy, too. Uh, but anyways, let me know what y'all think down below. Uh, do you like Jerry McCain? Is there other guards you prefer better? Maybe you prefer Devin Carter better, who we talked about at number five on my list. So I'll be reading all of y'all comments. And let me know what you think down below. Because tomorrow we are coming out with part one of the guy that I am hoping for the most. Uh, so subscribe so you don't miss it. And like this video because we're on the grind to 5K subs. So all the support is greatly appreciated. And I'll see y'all next time. Peace out. Look, pull up in the city, tryna get that dead fast. Slash. Do it on my own, I don't need no dead weight. Like, had to kill him off, yeah, I need a headspace. You know this homegrown bitch don't offend me. Hmm.